Hi there, this is Leah Benford reporting on today's science from Science North. It's been quite a season for forest firefighters all across Ontario. Today we're at the Ministry of Natural Resources to interview a forest firefighter to see just what they actually do. Day to day basis, half of our uh, duties would be pretty well related to maintenance as far as keeping our equipment up in order and working order and the other side of it is actually extinguishing forest fires so uh, while we're not busy getting our gear up and running and ready to go we're usually dispersed throughout the province and ready to action fires without uh, you know we're st strategically placed in certain areas so we're ready and capable of actioning a fire without the within the province. I wouldn't say it's particularly a busy year maybe in comparison to the last three to four years that have been relatively wet in Ontario so there are fires that have been relatively in low numbers so this is probably closer to our seasonal average if you will uh, we're definitely uh, active forest fires though I believe we have uh, around 114 active fires at the moment and uh, so far I think totaling close to 600,000 hectares of uh, forest burned so it's uh, quite a bit if you look at our last uh, few years number. Uh, we've been acting pretty well the same as the northwestern crews. Half of us, uh, some of us have been doing initial attacks so pretty well waiting for the alarm to go off and being the first um, the first crew on to a, a forest fire so being the incident commanding crew on a forest fire or what we call sustained attack because they have such large forest fires out there um, they're putting people in on already existing control lines and things like that so half of initially attacking the fire and the other half would be attacking a already existing fire and replacing a crew that's maybe done their time. Preserving life number one so we're not going to try and get into too hairy of a situation but on large fires we'd look for usually either uh, establishments or values so uh, property camp if there's any tourists in the area or anyone that'll need potential rescuing if you will so we'd concentrate our our attention towards saving certain valuables if you will and if not then would be as far as actual firefighting would be uh, to just uh, as the first crew in, you'd want to find yourself a safe area to land because you wouldn't be necessarily attacking ahead of a very intense forest fire. Um, so working in conjunction with air attack, so we'd have water bombers actioning the fire and probably bringing in uh, larger fires, they usually bring in a little more experienced person as an extra eye in the sky, if you will, to sort of coordinate the things. With large fires comes a lot of crew, so a lot of uh, directing and a lot of uh, crew management. So a lot of things going on on large fires, but initially you'd find a safe zone and uh, establish some escape routes, safety zones for your people and uh, slowly attack them there. Usually smaller, usually we find them in time before they get big. Um, what's happening in the northwestern region is because they have such a large territory, they don't attack all of their fires. Some because fire is, you know, one of the great ways to regenerate the forest. So in a lot of areas, they leave act active bur fires. They let them. They just keep a close eye on them, if you will. We call them bob fires. We just they're being observed. So what we do is pretty well set up control parameters within communities. So as long as they don't get too close to a community, they'll make a decision where they're not to action the fire. So most of the time, no, they're not big. It does definitely happen. They've had uh, high winds and very dry forest fuels, so that's contributed to some very large, uh, fast-acting and moving fires. If we need your standard first aid. Um, there's a fitness qualification we need to meet called the pre-fit. You would need to do that. And then to start on, uh, you would have to first get your called the SP100 certification. It's uh, approximately a one week, maybe a week and a half course that you would have to attend to first then be hired on. Once you get those things, you would be hired on and then all the other uh, training and everything is done in-house, if you will. So you would slowly move up from there. So those would be the three basic requirements. First aid, the pre-fit and the S100 course. Thank you very much, Simon, for interviewing with us today, and best of luck in the rest of the You're summer. You're very welcome. Thank you. So there you have it, a first-hand look into what a forest ranger does on a day-to-day -day basis. Keep checking back for more of today's science.